and welcome. Thank you for choosing our video. My name's Charlie and this is Hazel. And today we're gonna to talk about the birthing process for rabbits and then the growth and development of their babies. So to begin, I'm just gonna very briefly talk about mother rabbits and then afterwards I'm gonna go and get the babies and we'll discuss them for a little while. Um, so like I said, this is Hazel. She is our female rabbit who recently gave birth. Um, she may look a little bit smaller because she's a miniature breed. Um, she's a mini Rex um, to be exact. And so with mothers, mother rabbits are not very um, maternal. Their instincts there are a little bit lacking, but that's okay. Um, but I will sort of talk about what they're like before they actually give birth. So you can't actually really tell they're pregnant. They don't really have any of the signs most mammals do, like they don't get the giant stomachs or anything like that. Your main signifier for the fact that they're going to give birth is about two to three days beforehand. Um, she'll start pulling out her fur and creating a nest. And that's how you know, okay, there's some baby bunnies coming. Um, they might get a little bit bigger because they might put on a little bit of weight. But again, you might just mistake that for, oh, maybe she's eating a little bit too much. Um, but yes, other than the nest, there's not really a way of knowing. Now you can feel their, you know, their stomach area for the babies. I wouldn't necessarily recommend that because you can hurt them since they're so fragile and you don't know what stage she's in. So I wouldn't necessarily recommend that, but um, you can, or you can always go to the vet and find out that way too. Um, but back to their maternal instinct. Um, don't be too worried if they're not very involved because all they'll do is just feed the babies probably about once or twice a day. Hazel, for example, only feeds hers once a day. And that's about it. Otherwise, they pretty much ignore them for the rest of the day. Um, and even then, you still might not see her feeding them because they tend to do it in the middle of the night. Same with the birthing process. They tend to give birth either in the middle of the night or very early in the morning. So you might miss that as well. Um, as far as the birth itself goes, it's very quick. Um, so most people never actually see their rabbits give birth just because it goes by so quickly. We actually got a video of her giving birth and we will add that clip in so you guys can see. Um, but anyways, that's enough from Hazel. I will go and grab the baby bunnies and we can see what they're like. Hello, so we're back. I've grabbed the baby bunnies and I will show you what they're like. Oops. So. Oops. Oh, come on. There we go. All right, so this guy is our biggest. These little rabbits are eight days old. Um, so like I said, he is our biggest in size. As you can see, he's got fur. His ears are starting to lift up. Um, and yeah, super cute. Let's see, this one is the second biggest. This one's hopping around a lot, which is interesting. It's like a very spastic hop. Um, but she looks like her mom. She's got the same coloring and everything. And she's probably the fluffiest out of all of them so far. The one that's in the middle is this guy here. And we're pretty sure he's gonna be all white. Um, but yeah, he's the middle, middle rabbit. All right, this one here, we named him Spazzy. He is the second smallest and he, he's still a bit sleepy right now, but usually when he's awake, he is super spastic and all over the place, um, hence his name. But you can see how much smaller he is. Then, our absolute smallest and runt is this little guy here, and he is super small. He is progressing though, because as you can see, he's got fur and his little tiny ears are starting to stand up. He's trying to suckle on my fingers right now. Um, but I will also show you the difference between him and the big guy. Let's see. So, oops. As you can see, there is a huge difference in size. 
um, which is kind of crazy, but that happens. So like I said, these guys are eight days old. Rabbits get bigger very quickly. Um, they progress very rapidly. Um, you might be wondering if you're allowed to handle them. You most definitely can. They're not like baby birds where, you know, you can't touch them. If it's a domestic rabbit and you do handle your rabbit fairly frequently, they should know your scent. Therefore, if you're touching and playing with their babies, your scent's going to be on them, but they're already familiar with what that scent is, so she will not harm them. You're also going to want to handle them because it's very important that on a daily basis you check them. And what you're checking for is to make sure she is in fact feeding them. Now I too was a little bit worried about this at the beginning because I was like, how am I supposed to know if she's fed them or not? Um, and the way to do this is you flip them over. So let's see, I'll grab the big guy again. Um, I don't think she's fed them recently, but their belly when you flip them over will be super um, filled. It'll almost look like a balloon, like you'll be able to see through their skin and see their veins and stuff. And if it's all rounded and filled up like that, then you definitely know they've been fed. Um, if not, you can manually feed them. And that's what we did with the runt, because she was not feeding him. And to do that, you flip the mother rabbit over onto her back, and then you simply will hold the runt. What? Oh, it does take two people. You don't want to do this by yourself. You want someone to hold the mother and someone to hold the little runt. Um, and basically, yeah, so you'll flip her over and then you'll put the runt up to her belly to suckle onto the nipple. Now, now be very careful when you're doing this because the little baby rabbits do get very excited and they move around a lot and you do not want to drop them. So make sure you are in a safe place, maybe on a sofa or something where the ground is soft in case you do drop them. But just, you know, make sure they are kind of covered so they cannot wriggle, wriggle away from you, basically. Um, so, anyways, so don't get me wrong, it does not have to be the smallest rabbit in the litter that you might have to manually feed. It's just any rabbit she might not be feeding. So, like I said, it's very important that every day, and what I did is I did it every 12 hours, so twice a day. Um, check them to see for those bellies. There were certain points where the second smallest in the litter wasn't getting fed and so we had to feed Spazzy as well using the manual technique. Now there are alternatives to this if you cannot get it to work, if the mother rabbit won't cooperate or there's not enough milk. Situations like that, you can go to the store and buy yourself some kitten milk replacer and then you mix it with one tablespoon of heavy whipping cream and you can do it that way. I would definitely say try and do the manual feeding via the mother first because you'll have better results for the baby rabbits. Um, but if you can't, that is definitely an alternative. Um, so yeah, so twice a day you're gonna check for the feeding, but then it's also very important. Oh, here we go. Um, here is an example of kitten milk replacer put that further down. There we go. Um, and here's some heavy whipping cream. So you'll do one tablespoon of this with that for the babies that aren't feeding. Um, there we go. So anyways, the other very important reason you need to check, up, check on them at least once a day is because you're going to want to clean their bed. That's very easy to do. You're, all you're going to do is take the old towel out and put a nice new clean towel down. Be very sure that you don't mess with any of the fur or anything like that. You wanna keep as much of it as possible that way you don't freak your mother rabbit out. So what I do is I simply, I grab another box like this one here. I will take each baby and I will put them into, oops, come here. There we go. Into the bed. Kim, there we go. All right, into the bed like so. Be very careful because when you do this, they tend to get very frisky like they are now. Make sure none of them fall out. <laughs> 
Then you're gonna wanna take all the hair. Granted, we're on day eight now, so there is not nearly as much as there was. Like I said, you wanna make sure you can save as much of it as possible. Like I said, you're not gonna do it because some of the fur will stick to the towel and stuff like that. But the main reason you wanna change this towel out is with them being brand new babies, you wanna keep it as clean as possible. That way they don't get any infections or anything like that. Because basically they're just pooing, pooing and peeing, peeing <laughs> excuse me, in the same spot. Um, so simply take it out, you know, wash it, get rid of it, and then put the clean new towel back in. I always put the baby rabbits in the same corner that I found them. Again, trying not to freak the, you know, mother rabbit out too much. Now, they are living creatures though, so they will move, so don't get too freaked out if they decide to go elsewhere, because they will. Um, so then I simply put them back in the nice clean box, putting them all together. And then I cover them right back up with that same fur. And that is simply how you clean it. So I usually do that step in the nighttime just because I usually have more time at night than I do in the morning. But you can do it either time, just as long as like I said, you're checking to make sure they've been fed and that you're making sure they're nice and clean. Um, but otherwise, that is pretty much it for how to take care of them and your role in helping. One thing I didn't mention is you're going to want to, once your mother rabbit has given birth, once she's left that nest, you immediately want to check the baby rabbits. You're looking to make sure none of them were stillborn, none of them have any deformities, that kind of a thing, because if so, you're going to want to remove those rabbits. Um, that's something you want to do pretty immediately. Now, if it's something where she does have them in the middle of the night and you don't find it until the morning, that's fine. Um, otherwise, though, also what we try to do is anytime we take these rabbits out, we will distract the mother in some way, shape, or form, whether that be giving her a nice little treat of some kind of vegetable, or we'll let her, you know, run around, get a little bit extra exercise. But basically, so she doesn't notice we're kind of messing with them that much. Um, you also want to make sure through this entire process that the mother rabbit is fully taken care of. You want to wash your hands um, every time you go to touch the baby rabbit, just because, again, it's not because of the scent, it's more so that you don't infect them with various bacteria and stuff like that, since they are um, fairly sensitive. But as for the mother, you're gonna wanna make sure she is fully fed. She has a lot of water, cause they drink way more water after they've given birth and while they're pregnant. Um, definitely make sure you feed her, that is very important. Yes, yeah, so basically you wanna make sure she has extra food than she would do on a regular basis. Um, so whether it be more pellets, give her more hay, um, we give her extra treats throughout the day just to make sure she is happy and fully fed. Um, it is very sad, but it can happen. Mother rabbits, due to their lack of internal instinct, can eat their, their babies. So making sure she has enough food and water is one very important step to making sure she does not do that. Same thing with why we don't, you know, we try and distract her is because we want to give her the least amount of stress as possible. That way she does not hurt them. Um, a very important thing to do is when you know she's close to getting ready to give birth, so like I said, if you start seeing her pull out her fur, anything like that, you want to remove the male. Put him in a different cage, make sure she does not see him. A, it's because they can get pregnant immediately after giving birth, so that's one reason, because you do not want the mother rabbit giving birth before she's done weaning this, this set she will not have enough milk to do so. But the other very important reason is because their maternal instincts get so messed up, um, she can see the male rabbit as some form of predator. And again, she could harm the babies thinking that she's saving them from, from this potential predator. Another very important thing, if you do have other pets and animals in your home, such as cats and dogs, I would highly suggest putting them away or putting the rabbits in a separate location while they're babies. It doesn't matter even if they're very friendly, like for example, our we have cats. 
our rabbits play with our cats. Um, they don't harm them. They play together and they enjoy each other. But even so, like I said, with the mother rabbit's instincts being so weird during the whole process, you don't want her thinking they're predators either. And like again, if they think, if the mother thinks they're a threat, she will harm the babies. So I would definitely, we put the cats in a different room just because we didn't want to disturb her too much by moving the whole cage and freaking her out. So we just move them into separate rooms for the time being until they're a little bit bigger and we know she's not going to harm them. Um, so those are a few do's and don'ts. Um, another one I would say is don't destroy her nest. Like I said, you can clean the towel and stuff like that, but don't get rid of her fur, whatever she puts in there, kind of leave it how you found it. That way she doesn't, you know, she doesn't think anything weird is going on. Um, but yeah, otherwise, that is, that's basically, it's very sad, but it does happen. So those are just a few things you can do to try and prevent it from happening. We honestly think, because our first litter, um, did get eaten, unfortunately. We do think, though, this was contributed to the fact that they might have been early because they weren't, they were more gray than they were pink. They were very wrinkly and they were quite a bit smaller than this litter was. So those are things to look for. You want, and we'll post some pictures as well so that you can see what ours looked like. But you want them to be very pink when they come out. You wanna make sure they're not overly wrinkly and like I said, they're this size, they were a lot bigger this time. Um, and that's another thing to look for when you're trying to figure out if they've been fed. They will get wrinkly if they're becoming dehydrated. So the wrinklier their skin is, the worse they're off, worse off they are. So definitely check for that. Um, but yeah, so day one, like I said, they're very small, pink, hairless, kind of look like making mole rats. They're not very pretty. Um, but they did begin to get fur on about day four. So you can look forward to that. Like I said, since they're super quick, um, by day 10, they should be fluffy. They'll actually look like little tiny rabbits and they should have their eyes open. And like I said, we're on day eight. So very exciting. We'll keep you guys posted and we'll show you how they progress. Thank you so much for watching our video. Give us some likes if you enjoyed watching it. And definitely subscribe to our page if you wanna see how these little guys get on. But anyways, thank you so much. Also, check out down below. We have some videos of the rabbits. We also have some pictures to show you how they've progressed and what their early stages were like. Thank you.